Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cinemassacre's Monster Madness! I mean, I want to be the Boshi. Now, uh, you might be asking yourself, Gunslinger, what the heck just happened? You were just at, you know, we just left off on a cliff cliffhanger. Well, it's a couple days later, and, uh, what you guys did not see is about 45 minutes of me being an absolute idiot and not realizing the one trick. So, trust me, there was not any good commentary. I, I specifically went over it trying to see if there was anything good. There was not, trust me. But, uh... Yeah, look at all those deaths. That's a lot of deaths. Now I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you, you people, what I was doing wrong. Okay? You have to hug this wall. Because if you straight fall into this, then the stupid thing is going to activate right away. Which I apparently did not get. So, you know, whatever. Yeah, It annoys me. Now... I'll be right back, everybody. I need to go check something because Hypercam has been a very, very weird person as of late. It's not recording like the last three seconds of what I said. I don't know if it's just, you know, me making too short of a video or whatever. Maybe it was the camera size or whatever, but I need to go check it. So I will be, I, yeah, I will be right back. So give me one second. Oh, you know, yeah, I'm back. Uh, it's very nice. Actually, it's uh, it wasn't too loud or quiet and it didn't cut out, which is kind of concerning that it did that one time. But anyway... Basically, what I was doing for the last 45 minutes was I kept falling, kept dying, kept falling, kept dying. And I even changed my character, I think, about maybe seven times, which is crazy. And uh, I'll hold on to the footage. I will hold on to the footage. If you guys really, 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 really want to see just me failing over and over and over again, I will upload it as a 45-minute video. Just call, I'll call it, like, uh, I want to be the Boshi outtakes. Okay, but I'll leave it up to you. Uh, so I'll hold on to it. Anyway, here, look. You're supposed to go like that, and then bump exactly like that. It took me so long to figure out. It was insanity. Ugh. Now, apparently there's a secret this away. And not the pleasant kind of secret. No, no, no. I think this is invisible blocks. Yes, it is. I hate invisible blocks. So, I will go try to get that secret. I am not 100% sure what it is, but I shall go and uh, attempt to get it. So, you know whatever. Oh, and I have a story and a half to tell you guys. I have an amazing, epic story from real life, a real life experience that happened to me that made me madder than anything has happened. Like, even putting Bashi aside, this made me more mad than anything else, I think, in the last five years of my life. Now, a lot of you already know this because I've been talking with a couple of you guys on Skype and all that and, and Steam because I was so angry that I had to vent. <clears throat> But this will be a very interesting story for those of you that don't know. Okay, so, I... Ooh! Oh, wait. Okay, looks like my blood is right there. I'm gonna leave my mouse there, just for, uh, continuity. But anyway, um, so I... Oh, I messed that up. I... I messed that up again! Oh, okay, now I can continue with the story. Except when I messed that up. Anyway, so I was, uh applying to a lot of places to find a job because I am currently unemployed and I am really trying to find a job because, you know, cash money is what the world loves and I was trying to grease the wheels a little bit by giving it cash money. That's right, I was trying to love the world by greasing it up. Amazing. Any hoozle. Um, so I was applying to a couple different places and I actually applied to Toys R Us and they responded back and they're like, hey, we'd like to bring you in for an, for an interview. And as some of you might have known, if you're following my channel, uh... I went, in for an, I went in for an interview at Babies R Us, which lasted three hours, three hours long for an interview. It was a group interview, admittedly, but still, three hours for one interview? My God. But anyway, um, and so then about four days ago, I got another call, and they were like, hey, we want to bring you in for an, in for an interview at uh, Toys R Us. Would that be okay? And I was like, yeah, that'd be perfectly fine, and I was looking forward to it. So, you know, I got... Showered, shaved, and all that. Got all dolled up, looking schnazzy, as I tend to do. And I went out, drove all the way out to Toys R Us, which is about, I'd say, six miles away from my house or so. And uh, got there, parked, got out. And I went to the front, and there was a whole bunch of customers there. I was surprised. There was about a line of, I think, six people. So I got in the back of the line. There wasn't anybody behind me. I was just waiting and waiting and waiting. Ah, come on. And, um, so I got to the front, and I asked the gal at the front, a very attractive young lady, and I said, well, she was older than me, so what am I saying, young lady? 
Um, well, she looked older than me. I don't know. Maybe she's like 16, but looks decrepit. I don't know. But anyway, so I was like, yeah, hey, I'm in. I'm here for the uh, the interview. And they're like, oh, okay. Well, uh, could you stand over there? We're gonna get the floor manager. I'm not gonna tell you her name, but I'll just call her uh, Kathy. Why not? They're like, could you wait over there for Kathy to come out? And I was like, okay, that's fine. So I go and I stand. They said to wait in this general area because they did general area because they didn't want me like wandering around the store. And then like the guy, the gal gets there and they're like, oh my god, he's not anywhere. So I waited and waited and waited. And I'm in a somewhat okay clothes. I got like a collared shirt on, got my nice shoes, you know, fresh faced and all that. But I'm all by myself in a Toys R Us standing next to all this Halloween candy and like costumes for like five year olds kind of looking creepy, you know. And you know how long they made me wait? They made me wait 25 minutes before anybody came out. And then a whole bunch of them came out, like seven different people. Some of them had name tags, some of them didn't. But there was this one lady that looked like she would be in charge. And so I kind of w went up to them and I kind of waited for their conversation to peter out. And I said, hey, are you Kathy? And she's like, yes, I'm Kathy. And I was like, well, I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to tell you my name. My name can just be blah, blah, blah from now on. My name is the Invisible Gunslinger, number one. This is my associate, Heinrich. And we are here for an interview. She looks me up, looks me down, and says the line that I will never forget as long as I live. And she said this sentence with such malice, I might have been a toothless peasant to her empress. She looked me dead in the eye, which was hard because I'm about, I don't know, a foot taller than her and 200 pounds lighter. And she looked at me and said, I don't interview people who wear jeans. Go reschedule. I stood there trying to hold my mouth, you know, closed because my jaw just wanted to drop to the floor. And she walked away and went back to her casual conversation with the coworkers. So I turned around, stunned, and I went back up to the lady at the cash register and I said, Okay, could I reschedule? And I was expecting them to bring out like a clipboard or something. And they're like, your name's blah, blah, blah. Your name's Gunslinger? And I'm like, yeah, we'll call you. Walks away. So, I left the store. And I have never in my life been so mad at one sentence that somebody said. I've had some real doozies, but that... I was about to explode. I was just, oh my god, still thinking about it. And ironically, uh, this was a couple days ago, I think this was about three days ago, and I uh, am wearing the jeans that I wore to that uh, thing right now. And they're not, they don't have holes in them, they're not like super baggy, they're right up by my waist. You know, uh, my underwear isn't showing or anything like that. And I had a collared shirt on, for god's sakes. And I knew they had a, like, dress code where you have to wear, like, a red shirt tucked in with a belt, khakis and all that, leather shoes. But I didn't think that applied to the interview. <sighs> so, I moved my mouse like an idiot. So basically, that's my little rant about that. And <laughs> when I got home... Everybody was like, hey, you're already back. And I was like, yep. And they're like, well, how did it go? I'm like, it went fantastically. I put another F word in the middle of that, but, uh, you know, I can't say it here. And, uh, yeah, I went I went straight to my computer. And uh, I actually talked to uh, Zero Mega Manex, and he's like, what's going on? And I was like, I don't know. And he's like, you should complain to the district manager. But, you know what? They haven't given me a call yet. It's been about four days later. They have not given me a call to reschedule yet. They might never, but if they do, I am so tempted to go in in like a three-piece suit. I have one at the ready, because I'm a fancy person. I have a three-piece suit at the ready, and I could just overdress to the extreme. I even have a, uh, a pocket watch on a chain, and I'm sure I, I know a couple people, and I could get a monocle, you know, I've got a fancy hat. I could go in there all posh. Hello, I'm here to have a job interview at this establishment. Yes, my name is Reginald Sir Featherbottom the Third. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Now, see, I could go right up there, and apparently that is not a pulsating tentacle that I thought was jerking to my pain, but it's apparently one of the uh, double jump thingies. I moved the mouse again. 
You know what? Forget that secret. Forget it. We, yeah. I'm tempted to say forget it, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try just a little bit. Because I... Somebody told me that it was a secret. They're like, if you go to the right, there's something cool. So I assume it's a secret. I don't know. Maybe it's the right way to go. I'll give this another five minutes. How's that? I'll give another five minutes. That's a decent amount of time to spend on a secret. <laughs> I know I'm probably disappointing people, and I wonder what kind of secret it is. I am very curious. Very curious indeed. But anyway, so, uh, in fact, I'm almost hoping they call me back so I can go back in there. Because, uh, you know, it's more material for me to rant about if they nitpick about, like, my shoes or something. Oh, my God. If they say you got to go reschedule or you're, like, fired, oh, my God, I am going to put my ass up somebody's 500-pound butt. Oh, God. I won't be able to help myself. Or you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to sit there, and I'm going to bring out Heinrich, and he's just going to laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. <laughs> because it was crazy. I couldn't believe the gunslinger even put up with that kind of... Baloney. Oh, it was just obscene, and I have never in my life wanted to speak up as strongly as I wanted to then. Oh, it would have been glorious, but the look on their faces if they had seen me come out. Oh, God, it would have been priceless. <laughs> but yes, I, I thought I was going to die there. If they do that again. If you do that again. Heinrich's coming out. I don't care if I'm crazy. I'll tell you what is crazy. Denying an interview because somebody wears jeans. And I could almost understand it, but there was a few things that made it even worse that amplified my emotions. A, that they made me sit around. Well, not even sitting. I had to stand. My feet were getting tired because I was wearing very uncomfortable shoes. I wasn't wearing, like, tennis shoes or anything like that. But anyway, and my shoes weren't like leather. They were just very non-broken-in shoes. You know, I didn't want to wear my natty old sneakers there. But, um, yeah, I had to stand there, and all these parents kept coming in, looking at me like I was some kind of pervert. It just... And I didn't even get any fourth warning. Like, I could understand maybe if I, like, was told somewhere, like, oh, you know, it's not okay to be wearing jeans and stuff, but I got no fourth warning. It was just a blasphemy. A blasphemy against me. Against me. And you know how mad I can get. Well, I'm sure I'm going to get even more mad. And by the way, I do know what the boss of this area is. Because when, uh, a couple months back ago, I was talking with Zero Mega Man X. And he was like, oh man, this game Bashi, it's so hard. There's this one boss that's like crazy. And his name's Sonic. So I do know that there's a Sonic boss. And he is apparently extraordinarily tough. But, um, I don't know what he's going to do. I hate you. Two more tries. If I can get over to that screen two more times, I will, uh, like this. Okay. If I die here and then I die one more time, I'm gonna say, forget you to this secret. Forget this secret. One. Because I'm in no mood. I'm in no mood right now. In fact, I should open my scotch that I have at the ready, but I'm gonna get over there. And if I die, that scotch is being popped open like some kind of 16-year-old's business. Yes. Oh, the swears that I could swear to you, Banana Lord. The Banana Lord peels away all unbelievers. That is correct. Believe it! I've said this before, I'll say it again. I want Naruto to be a priest. So he can say, believe it! Oh my god. <gasps> Believe it. <laughs> Believe it. Oh my god. Leap of faith. Wait a minute, how far back does that go? Hmm. You know what, just for fun. Oh! I just wanted to see how much it... Oh. I wanted to see like how far that went. I'm going to try to do that. Because I have a feeling that upper path is far too easy. I'm really suspicious about this game. To the point of insanity. Calm down. 
I said I wasn't going to go for the secret, but hey-ho, I should have died there. Cool, cool story, bro. Oh! I just got a feeling about this upper pathway. What? I fell! Oh my god. Oh! Good god. I knew that upper pathway looks... Oh my god, is that the boss room? Is that the boss room? What? That's lucky as heck. <laughs> Amazing. That's earned me my scotch. Give me that. Mmm. That was pure luck. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you, Heinrich. I know you had something to do with that. Okay, I'll be right back, everybody. I just need to go do one thing. I'm going to break up the episode. I'm going to try to break up the episodes a little bit more, so we'll be, we'll be right back. 